So now we are going to start with our first assignment. So it's in our photo bucket under a digital one assignments. Assignment one, it is called a fantasy landscape. And I have underneath each of the portfolio assignments, there are 10 of them in total. Um, for the first nine, I have instructor demonstration folders and past student example folders for each one. And I'll change these in little ways each semester. I'll tell you about the changes for this semester, but the skills and the, the abilities I'm trying to help develop through the project always remain the same. So what is a fantasy landscape? Well, we are going to composite a fantasy landscape, which much like the cartoon jumble means you are not going to be painting your own pixels, right? To fill in space. You are allowed to take your own photographs as long as they're high enough resolution and use them. And you can take your own photographs of anything and use them. But you can also use found pixels, found photographs, because the goal is to make an original composition out of other people's or other pixels from other places, just like our cartoon jumble. And it's going to start with this kind of sketch. Now this semester I provided you the sketch, so it's less original than it could be if you drew the sketch yourself, but it will get you kind of started and understanding landscape a little bit quicker. And the sketches I provided you are from these public domain postcards. And I've just broken down the, um, the landscape, the, what do we call it? The postcard format landscape into elements such as the far background, the middle ground, and the foreground elements. So here, this just shows roughly <laughs> different elements I would want in that landscape. And then you, you kind of, composite it together in that way. And a landscape doesn't need to be landscape format to be a landscape, but we're going to be using postcards this time, which are all landscape format so that they all work together. So it all starts with a sketch, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, try to find elements that we think would work for those compositional parts of the sketch. And then when we composite them together, we try to make it look as believable as possible. Believable means it follows its own logic. It fits in its own universe. It doesn't need to be photorealistic for our earthly environment, right? It can be out in outer space, there can be floating mountains, <coughs> but one mountain should look like it belongs to the same universe as, an, as another mountain in that same picture, right? So you wouldn't have something from Looney Tunes floating next to something from Final Fantasy. So in that way, I, I want them to be believable landscapes. They also have to be high enough resolution that when we look at them full scale, they take up a lot of the screen. In fact, the computer won't let me zoom in enough because we want to print these at full, at full resolution for our portfolios. Now, this is what I would do in your notes. I've given you a composition, and so to put it into the video, I'm going to use FaceTime here. You're not required to do this, but you might find it helpful. And I'm going to take a photo of the sketch that I will be using. You all got to choose your sketch in some form, right? So this is my composition. I'm going to hit Command-Shift-4 to get a targeted screen grab. Draw the box around and then let go. Close FaceTime. Open it up in preview. Use the tools to flip it horizontally so it's not a mirror image anymore. Use the adjust color tools. To just make it a little bit easier to see. I can sharpen it. I can contrast it. And this is what we're going to build on top of. So I have two boys at home. We've purchased a lot of different educational toys through the years. One that we have is of the United States and it's a wooden puzzle, right? And if all the pieces are missing from the puzzle, it kind of looks like this. It has the shape of each state within the full shape of the, of the country. And so it helps you know you know, what's the shape of Wisconsin and where does that go? That is what this sketch is for you. It shows you the shape that you're going to use 
for different things. For instance, for the far background, the far background has to fit into that shape. The middle ground has to fit into this shape. The background has to fit into that shape. The foreground here, the near foreground, the near foreground. If you have the same number in two shapes, it means it's the same source material, right? But I get to choose what I fill that with. So in your sketchbook, I asked you to take that and tape it into your sketchbook with room around it. So I'm going to call that landscape composition sketch. And I am going to open a new file in Photoshop. You guys will be doing this beginning of next class. And we are going to make it the most versatile file size we can, which is 11 inches tall, 14 inches wide. Remember, it needs to be inches, not pixels. at a resolution of 350 pixels per inch, or a lab resolution, which is a little bit higher than professional standard. Then you're going to take your the photo of your sketch, and you can decide if you want to scan it or if you can trust just, just using your uh, FaceTime camera. And you're going to fit it into that format. Place it on. The computer's going a little slow. Now it's going to make that, that camera image really blurry, and that's fine. And then I can use transform here just to very subtly take out the curves, straighten it back up. This is just because I was pinching it a little bit. so that we have a good blueprint for, for our fantasy landscape. And we want that blueprint to be around 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. That allows us to print it at 8 by 10 at a high enough resolution. It allows us to also print it all the way up to 16 by 20 at a high enough resolution to get a decent print result. Okay, I'm going to move it down just so I can see that tag. So if you ever lose your sketch, I have them all tagged. I'm going to fill in this empty space with just white. Okay. And then I am going to make more space around it. But first, I'm going to use my guides and just let them stick to the sides of my original composition. So this is 11 by 14 by 350 pixels per inch. Now I'm going to grow my canvas size, the paper behind. I go to image canvas size, and I'm going to make this 40 inches wide by 30 inches tall, which is a full size sheet of paper for an offset lithography press. And the extension color I'm going to use is not white. Instead, the extension color is gray, growing from the center. So what that gives me is a workspace. This is like my drafting table. My drafting table is about 30 by 40 inches, where I'm going to put all my different collage pieces around my intended composition, just like those puzzle pieces from the United States of America, scattered around the puzzle. And then we're going to learn how to cut the pieces out and fit them into our composition. But before I can do that, I have to just think, what kind of fantasy landscape do I want to create? And you all have this ability, right? So. I gave you black and white, like kind of bad photocopies of what the postcards were that I modified and based your compositions on, but that does not need to mean that that's what you use, right? So, because they're all from kind of vintage America. So fantasy can mean whatever you want. First of all, it means what kind of place do you want? So I'm going to make a new layer here, and I am going to... Uh, just treat it like a sketchbook, right? So the first thing is, what is the place? You know, what kind of, this is, can go in your notes. And I'm looking at mine and I'm seeing these shapes and I'm thinking, 
this could be kind of a cool mountainous desert. And how does that work? Well, I see this middle ground, this big middle ground thing, and I think that could be a really cool dust cloud. That could be, you know, um, lots of debris like turning in the wind. But if I wanted to make it a swamp, it could be like this big mother root tree. Or if I wanted to make it um, a glacier, it could certainly be that, like cutting through the valley, right? So you have full opportunity. The next thing is the when. So when am I looking at this mountainous desert? Well, I see the far background, I get sky peeking through. So I'm thinking maybe sunrise or sunset, right? And then I see the background, and there's this big kind of rock. So that might be mountainous. Maybe it will be rocky. And I'm just guessing what that kind of shape can be. If I don't want to see my guides right now, I can hit a command semicolon, and it will toggle them on and off. And the only reason I might not want to see them is because my lines will stick to them as I'm drawing. All right. So a mountainous rocky desert at sunrise. Now I get to think of, well, is it on the planet Earth or not, right? So if I say, like, not Earth, <laughs> what ideas do I have to make that work? Well, I get to play with that in the foreground, the near foreground. Um, maybe they have different kind of physics. Maybe they have different kind of liquids that make oceans, right? Maybe it's like an ocean of jello. So I can just put in ideas. It has a jello ocean. If it has a jello ocean, what should go in the near foreground? Maybe it has like brownie. I'm just hungry right now. Um, maybe it has like brownie uh, land masses. What else can I think of? What else would make it unreal? Maybe it will have like multiple suns. It's a little cliche because of Star Wars, but it works. It's a goodie. Um, maybe it will have a different use of something. <laughs> reflections work differently. All reflections are dark. I don't know. You can come up with your own physics. And this is just brainstorming. Now I want you to kind of think of a list. You can put this right into your sketchbook. So references to find. And this is your homework over the weekend. We have to do a lot of image collecting. And it can be a lot of fun. So references to find that are 8 megapixels or larger. Sometimes I do 10, but I think 8 will work. And you need at least 5. But you're probably going to get a lot more than that. So now with these ideas, I'm going to look for like dust storms. I want to look for um, brownies. <laughs> I want to look for jello. Adding extra letters to jello. I want to look for um, crystals. They're always fun. My nine-year-old's really into geology. It'd be fun to find some like high-resolution geodes or something. What else can look kind of funky? Um, I need mountains and rocks. I need sky. So at least five, right? And you're going to see how you might get multiples of each of these. So then how do we image search? We simply go to Google Images. And very quickly, faster than my computer wants to keep up with me. Come on. You just search for those things and you limit your tool settings to be eight megapixels or larger. So size larger than eight megapixels. And just like we did for the cartoon jumble, you have to vet each thing. So if I look for brownies, 
I want nice, clear, high-resolution images of brownies.